Welcome back, friends. It's Melanie with Melanie Stamps, where color and creativity collide. Today, we have basic Copic coloring with House Mouth Stamps by Spellbinders. House Mouse is in the house. I have been saying that all day. House Mouse is in the house. I have started coloring this little sweetheart, and I wanted to finish coloring it with you. So, these are the brand new, and yes, I have all six of them, the brand new Spellbinders slash House Mouse Designs collection. When I heard these were coming out, I had a little jump for joy party in my little heart because I have been a House Mouse collector for quite some time. So much so that my husband spots them. He spots them at thrift stores. He spots them at Michael. Or he spots them at Hobby Lobby. He's like, do you have this one? Do you have this one? And I mean, I have so many, I don't know which ones I have. So I have the wood mount. I have the cling mount. I have all six brand new ones. So I'm going to share them with you. So. I don't know if all of you know, but they have names. So, Spellbinders has named them the stamp, but the little mice have names too. So this is T for two, and something cool about Spellbinders is they've included the um, sentiment stamps. So this is Amanda and Mud Pie. Mud Pie. So they're having tea in the little flowers. And I should have turned this around so we could see. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? Um, I'm not going to do this for every single one of them if I put them all in backwards. But thankful for your friendship, and I like hanging out with you. Aren't those cute little sentiments? My other stamps don't have their own sentiments. So I think this is a cool addition to the stamp. So if you see that they're $14.99, realize that you're not only getting a house mouse stamp, but you're also getting sentiments. And there is this deal, if it's still available, where you can get the whole bundle at a discount. So, I don't know by the time this airs if it's still gonna be available, but it is there as of this moment. So, we'll see. But anyways, that's the first one. This is the one we're coloring right now, Bouquet for You, and this is Miss Monica. Um, and that one has two sentiments also. Clean, let's see, this is Popping By, and this is Miss Amanda. She's in the poppies. <laughs> this one's very good. Look at this little guy, look. Is he not the cutest thing waiting for that? That makes me think of my little Liam. My little Liam's only, well, he's almost six months. But that just makes me think of Liam. But he wants that berry so bad. But this is Mud Pie, Muzzy, Amanda, and Monica all in the same stamp. So two sentiments with that one as well. This is Mud Pie. And he's, this says Daisy Mouse. But we all know he has a name. That's Mud Pie. And then Spring Rain. That's just too cute. Okay, Monica, friend, and Amanda. So, they have a little friend, doesn't have a name. So, okay, so that's the collection. So now I have started coloring this just to save a little time. And um, matter of fact, I just realized I didn't do all of that. I was gonna do these two, finish the, gra or finish the greenery, and do him. So, um, yeah. Okay, we'll just see how far this, how far we get with this. But anyways, I just wanted to show you a little Copic coloring. I love Copic coloring. Most of you that's watched my channel know that already. Um, I am using Copic Express It paper, which is my paper of choice. I did start stamping these out on, oh, here's a couple others of the sentiments on this one. I wanted to show you an example. Um, I printed this out on my printer, but we're very good together and you're so sweet are the ones with that set. Um, 
but anyways, I was um, printing or stamping these out, and I wanted to show you. First, I stamped them out, these three, out on um, the paper I glimmer on, which is, what is it? Hold on, Hammer Mill, color copy, cover, um, with the chameleon on it. Um, 80 pound weight and I had the hardest time getting the memento ink to ink the stamp properly I was doing it in my misty couldn't get it to stamp I I probably inked it in the misty four five times over and over and it kept getting darker and darker but it wasn't inking everything and I was so frustrated because I didn't like it getting so so dark but I couldn't get the branches and the flower, I remember right in here wouldn't ink. This last one here wouldn't ink. And this area in here wasn't inking. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, and I, I thought, I mean, are the stamps defective? I mean, you know, is what I was thinking to myself. Uh, but I was going to try to color on this, thinking I might do some color pencils. I might do some, uh, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I thought maybe masking. And, you know, inky the background. I wasn't sure at the time, but I thought I'll color it all on this. So I might even try some Copics on this because I've been doing some Copics on the foiling. So then I decided in another sitting, I decided I'm getting my Copic paper out, stamp these out, first try. Same ink, same misty, different paper. The Copic paper took the ink so much better. And look, let me show you two side by side. Um, one had to be stamped over and over and over and over just to get the full image. This one, nope, one time. Now I could have done it two or three times to get it black, but I didn't want it super black. This is already super detailed as it is. If I want any of my color to show up in there, you know, my color's not gonna show in here. So I think I'm restamping these on my Copic paper before I color them. But I just wanted to show you that. I think my Copic colors are gonna show much better in these and this one here. So my colors are showing up beautifully in there. So just wanted to share that a little bit with you. Okay, I'm going to finish this greenery. What I've done so far is I've colored everything in with the YG11. I've just done this section completely. I went um, back in and started doing some um, the darker areas right in here. Pull it up here so you can see it better. I started doing some of these darker areas right around his hands, down below his feet, and right above his feet just to give those shadows. Um, with YG13 and then I went over them a little darker with YG17 and then I just did some flicks up in here where the shadows would be same colors so I'm just gonna finish these out and honestly the stamps if you're learning Copic coloring these are awesome stamps to start with because the shadows are already dotted in with from the artist drawn lines so it's a no-brainer where to put some shadows. So it's perfect to be coloring in. It, it looks a lot more difficult than it is. So um, jump right in, grab your pens. Just make sure you stamp with Copic Friendly Ink, which I recommend uh, Memento Tuxedo Black. It's right here. This is what I recommend for all of your Copic coloring and Copic Express It paper. Those are my two go-to never fail choices. You won't get bleeding. You won't get ink smearing. You can print from your printer if you want to do digital images um, onto the Copic Express It. There's a lot of companies with some beautiful, beautiful digital images. Um, but it's a little pricey. Yes, I understand, but you get what you pay for. So you can spend your money however you want to. 
but tr save yourself the headache. Ask me how I know. I done been there. I done done it. I gave up the first time I colored. I gave it up for a year or so, and then I kept seeing it in the magazines, and I said, I've got to learn how to do this. So I went back to the drawing board, and I researched and researched and researched, and finally realized I was using archival ink, and I was using the wrong paper, and which is why it was an awful mess, and it was user error. So I learned to color from Kitten Clowder online classes, um, Elise Keegan is an amazing instructor. Tell her I sent you if you go over there. Um, she is just the bomb and her classes are well worth it. So I am just adding some darks in the shadowy areas. And like I said, the dot, the little dots really show you where those darkened areas should be. It's it's really nice, but anything down in the crevices are gonna be darker. Anything under something else is gonna be darker. If it's like right here, where this is over this, see all these little artists, you put all the dots here and it's because that has a cast shadow under it. And that's there because of this branch right here. So you gotta put that cast shadow under there. And that's why all those dots are sitting there. It's like back behind him, her, him. I don't remember which one this is. Usually the tips are a tiny bit darker too because they're farther away. I'm gonna put a little extra on the underneath side because your light source is usually coming from the top. I'm gonna put a little darker on the bottom. Like those bigger ones. Okay. Something else I like about this image too is the dots are already there so it doesn't have to be like super perfect. It's like very artsy and it's already got like so much of the dot shadow there that, you know, you can kind of put it wherever you want to because the dots are already doing the job. But I like to like this branch here, I like to put a little bit where it's twisting and then a little bit at the root. And then you see this brightness at where it bends. And that that's that light hitting it. And I just love the way that looks. Matter of fact, right there, I'm going to put a little bit more light. That lighter color. So it shines a little bit more. Okay, so that's the green done. Now for these lighter ones that I've already colored light, I'm actually just using two colors on this blend. I made it super easy for myself. So I uh, usually use three, sometimes four colors, but like I said, this image is very easy to do. These two colors, I actually don't even use very often. These are very pretty colors, begonia and raspberry, RV63, RV66. This is a very pretty color combination. I have put down the RV63. So I'm gonna go in here with a very light hand and I'm gonna, because this is a pretty dark marker, I'm gonna go in here and draw a very thin cast shadow. Right where, like this, this um, petal is on top of these back two petals. So I'm putting this cast shadow behind the top petal, if that makes sense. It's behind on either side. And then I'm gonna come in with the lighter and I'm gonna drag it back to the back pedal. I'm dragging, I'm putting my pen or pen nib down on the dark line and I'm pulling it into the lighter color. I'm just putting it down and dragging it out, pulling it down and dragging it out. 
and it's going to make that medium tone for me. It's also going to get rid of that harsh line that I drew. That dark line is going to kind of meld right into the image. Now that is really hard to tell because it's such a small area. Now my flicks are going to get a little bigger over here because I have more space. I'm dragging farther, in other words. I left white space up here at the top for that um, shine, kind of a highlight, so I'm not going to fill that in. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit here at the base of the petal, just a little bit down here at the base, going up the sides a little, and I'm going to drag that upwards. I'm dragging with the light marker, remember. Dragging the dark up into the light. And it gets lighter and lighter as I go up. Because it turns into just the light marker again. And I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm going to leave that light space at the top. And that's all there is to it, guys. If you don't feel like it's dark enough, you can go back in and you can darken it again that same line and do the same thing over again if you think it needs to be a little darker or you can let it dry and then come back in in a little bit you know after it dries because it does uh, copics do tend to settle when they dry they they a lot of times the blend looks even better when it's dry so you can let it settle there for a minute and then see if you like, you know, that blend there from dark to light. Another thing with Copics is the more you go over it, the darker it gets, even if it's the same color. So, um... By me going over that there just a second ago, that just made that a little center area a little darker. Copics also dry very, very fast. So, matter of fact, I shouldn't have my ceiling fan on right now, and I do. Um... So this alcohol is drying faster than when I did this over here. Um, so note to self, turn the ceiling fan off if you want a little more grace period. Um, so do small sections instead of larger sections. I'm actually going to hold my two markers in the same hand. Well, not the same hand, but... The other one so it's ready. So you just want to stick with um, small spaces so you can move the marker color while it's wet. And this is just a simpler, a simple way of coloring with Copics in this aspect of this. I could get into super technical and we could go with an even darker shade, which I do have here. But I thought for this, let's make it easy coloring and just try this and see what kind of look we would get. And that way, if people are intimidated with coloring these bigger images with Copics, you know, don't be scared. Just go for it. Just go for it. Whoops. And like I said, the artist drawn lines are your friend. Or in this case, in this case, it's more of a um, what's it called? Um, not, is it stenciling? What is it called? Um, where it's dots. Hmm. Tell me if I've got the right word. I don't think it's stencil. Where it's pixelated? Where they're doing this? I can't remember. It's technique. Um, I love doing it and using Copics, actually. Matter of fact, we could do it in his fur. Um, gosh, I'm going to have to look that up. That's going to drive me crazy, guys. Someone scream it out to me. 
I swear when I do these videos, I think you're out there just talking to me. I'm having a conversation here with myself. Y'all are so funny. I hear you talking to me. Y'all are my friends. Isn't that sad? <laughs> Y'all better comment back to me. <laughs> I love you guys. You know that, don't you? <laughs> I am having a lot of fun doing these videos. I'll leave a little bit of white there. I just like the way that looks. It looks like it's, it's got that reflection on the end. Not bad, not bad. Not as much definition. If we were to go darker, there would be more. I'll go dark on one of the other ones, not on camera, but um, maybe the poppies. I'll go, I'll go dark so you can see the contrast. Though red may not be the color to do that with. The poppies are are going to be... Well, they're going to be kind of orange. I got the colors here. I'm going to do them in those, I believe. I just don't want the videos going too, too long. I mean, if you guys want crazy long videos, tell me. But they do take a long time to edit. I do try to edit them. I, I am um, um, mindful of your time. I try to be. Yes, I appreciate you watching. This one I actually filled all the way into the tips. I think I did that because it's back behind everything. It's kind of like got some grass in front of it and it's got more going on. Okay, so now we'll put some light down here. This one actually has a little bit of a center showing. that in so I see it. If not, it'll end up purple. That's one reason I pre-colored the green because I knew if I did it in the video I'd end up coloring some flower green or because I'd be talking and talking and detail of color and does not probably go well together. I'd end up just like the other day losing my Losing my foil candles on the back of the paper I was holding. I mean, things like that don't go well together. <laughs> so I figured, you know, I'd be, that would be green and that would be green. And <laughs> so I thought, I'll better color this ahead of time. Now these stamps are quite big. Now this is an A2 piece of paper. Um, so the stamps are quite big. I mean, I pretty much am probably just going to mat them and put some gems maybe on them. I'm not gonna go too crazy and try to come up with a big, you know, elaborate decorative. But I think I'm just gonna go simple and make clean and simple cue cards with these. Now let's just color him real quick and we'll be done. Um, C's. I want to use C's. Let's see what he looks like in C's. I have done his skin only with a base color of E000 so far. I just did that so I could see where his skin was around those leaves and stuff. Here again. Or leaves. Greenery. Here again, just to be careful. I like to mark everything so I don't mess it up. It's like I'm doing now, just going around his outer body. So I can 
see the color and just get a feel for where I'm going to go. These little guys don't need much color. And I'm going to leave that little highlight there in the middle. But the artist here again, artist left your highlight. Artists, the artist really, really, really loves you. These are perfect for learning. So grab that big deal if you can get it. If you like House Mouse and it's available, grab that deal. Uh, I want to go a little bit darker. Let's see, where should we go a little bit darker? Maybe right in here for his leg. Right under his arm. Maybe. Right by his ear. Just a little bit under his neck. And I think that goes just around his back a little bit. And his thumb. Just because that would have shadow down there. Okay, and I'm going to go in with E, whoops, wrong side, E double zero, it just gives me a little more, a little more color. It doesn't need a lot. Here again, look, look, all those dots along the bottom of his tail, they need some love. Okay, I'm going to do the inside of his, oh man, it's thunder. I'm going to do the inside of his, um, his ear a little, uh, actually do this and then blend it a little bit. I need some pink too. R20, let's see, where's R20? thinking of this just as a human face. Use the same colors as a human face. And my R24 with a little bit of a pink move. Just blend that just a little bit right there. And there we go. Now for the ground, I will just pull in a little, oh, I want a little darker than that. Um, let's pull in that old sand. And I think I'll do that. Stippling. Stippling is what this is called. This is called stippling. Where you do all the little tiny dots for the ground or for whatever. The artist does it though. I'm going to hold them up to the camera and y'all see what you think. See my little highlight turned out. So now they got highlights. All of the outer ones have highlights. And this one even has a highlight right there. This is the only one that doesn't and that's because he's behind all of the green. So there's my little baby, my first house mouse. So I will put some pictures here at the end of the video of my finished cards so that you can see them. And I hope you've enjoyed this little quick tutorial and have a great day. Bye.